Thought, never thought I'd say that. Well, not so much the gardening, I'm more just enjoying reaping the rewards of the gardening or, you know, the, I mean, I, I do a little bit, obviously our gardener does the majority, but I'm just loving seeing the garden come to life every single morning. So I love to get my coffee, have a look outside, usually Bo's with me, but Bo is still asleep, it's quite early, it's like half past six, Bo is still asleep with Alex. I needed to get up and wash my hair. I've got a couple of meetings today in London. I wanted to wash my hair because it was just looking so drab. So I got up, made my coffee, and then straight outside. I love to have a look around every single plant just to see what's new, what's budding. And every day there's something new. Or there's a new plant that's just suddenly erupted out of the soil. Or a blossom has finally opened. And it's really exciting. I just can't wait until those hydrangeas are fully blooming because it's going to look absolutely magnificent out there. The amount of little flowers that are just blossoming in green that will get bigger and bigger and bigger over the next few weeks, it's gonna be like insane. There's gonna be like a thousand heads of hydrangeas out there. So I can't wait for that moment. It's gonna be absolutely stunning. Oh gosh, I just love that coffee machine. Beautiful mugs. I know. Do you know one of the things I get asked the most is where are your mugs from? So these are Emma Shipley. It's the exact same print that we have in our downstairs powder room. Not that we have two powder room. <laughs> it's the exact same wallpaper. So I absolutely love this print. So I have two of these mugs. Yeah, so my morning routine now. Get up, wash my hair or not. Head down, get a coffee. First thing I need in the morning. I walk around the garden with Bo. And then I'll come back in and I'll start my, my morning routine. Kicking off the morning with some Clay de Peau. Honestly, I'm truly just obsessed with these products. I've not stopped using them. I mean, especially, this one has, has kind of become a really massive favourite of mine, actually. This one, because this one is SPF 25, but it's also an SPF, sorry, an SPF 20. But it's a protective fortifying emulsion. So pretty much it's like a day cream with a bit of SPF in it. Obviously, you can use other SPFs as well on top. But yeah, it's just a really lovely lightweight day cream with a really fantastic glow in there. So I just absolutely love it. I never start the day now without the serum as well. I think I've mentioned this a couple of times recently, but it's genuinely what I'm using every day. So it's just kind of like easy to show you. It's always here. I have one in my skincare drawer and I've got one here in, in my makeup skincare drawer. Um, but yeah, honestly, this is quite, in terms of the Clay de Peau price points, this is really in the kind of the lower end of the spectrum range of the Clay de Peau. So it's a really good in into the brand to try and it really does work wonders. My skin now just feels so lovely and plumped. And I'm also very fast becoming a huge fan of this too, actually, whilst I'm on the Clay de Peau train. This oil, this Radiance oil, Radiant Multi Repair Oil is stunning. As you know, I'm a big fan of oils before my makeup. And just having a little bit and tapping it into my cheekbones. <sighs> Smell is heavenly. Almost like rosy florals. But I just love that little extra bit of oil. But I mean, you can put this on your body, you can put it on your nails. So yeah, so that's just my new morning routine. Starting off like that, put on a full face of makeup, get myself a bit more ready for the day. Um, well, this is my, this is like my ideal morning routine when I'm kind of doing things and I'm feeling productive. This is it. I'm inserting this new like garden moment where I really just think about, in fact, I just don't think about anything. That's what's so nice about it. I'm not on my phone. I've just got my coffee. I can just look at the flowers and not think about anything. And it's really helping me like tune out. So let me get on a face of makeup and I'll be back. <laughs> ready for the day. And I suppose if you want to see what I'm wearing for the day, 
you might need to find me on TikTok. That's what I do on there every single day now. So that, again, is part of my routine. I film my everyday look, every day now for TikTok. And I'm really, really enjoying that channel. In fact, I'd love to do a bit of a chat about social media because it's such a strange place right now. A lot of things are changing very rapidly right now. And I've got lots of thoughts on it. But maybe I'll do it later when I get home. Now I'm ready, face is on, hair is done. I just need to get ready and then head out for a meeting. So yeah, it'll be on TikTok. And I'm ready to go. Work meeting outfit. I've layered a basic um, VB body dress with a Miu Miu shirt, super preppy look, Fendi bag, Fendi tights, Akuzura boots, just very black and white and cool, Dior shades. Really, really like this. That's the only problem with this. You it's a slower it? focus. Is it? Well, it's slower. It's focus. older, isn't it? Oh, so it's, it's up there, looking up there again instead of looking to the left or right, but it's okay. Colours are nice. Yeah, I've changed them. Have you? Mm -hmm. well, I have to make it a bit more saturated. I just watched the thing on here. I'm back home after a day of meetings. Really productive meetings, actually. I'm already back with this one. Um, and I have a new camera again! Ouch! <laughs> little claws in my legs. Um, yes, I have a new camera. I'm back on the Canon G7X Mark II. I've gone back to my roots. I mean, do you remember when you got your first one? That must have been like five, six years ago. Not that, babe. Because you brought out the Mark III, but Probably like eight it years as, ago. As good. No, the Mark III was the not focusing, good. Focusing her yeah, the Mark II is the best one. And I mean, everyone I know still uses this camera. And I went to the Sony to try something out. Try two Sonys. Oh yeah, we did try yeah, some Sony's. Yeah, this is the X100. Yeah, and that was really expensive. It was very expensive. Really expensive, like over a thousand pound. And it was good. good in some ways, it was good. I thought it was really good. Yeah, but it just got, I don't know. It's just a bit, it's the problem with all these cameras, you throw them in your handbags and yeah, they you don't really fast. look after them, to be fair. You drop them and stuff, so then you wonder why they all start messing up. But I know. This is number six i want to say Probably. kind of g7x's you've been through this feels and looks a bit more robust you know, i think it's the tilting thing back that gives way first this is yeah. solid like this, yeah, this thing, really, that's really solid that's like you can see the hinge on it is solid whereas that's a bit flimsy on the back so although it's great i give it six months of doing that constantly yeah, with no, it, it the all thing. the screws get loose on it oh well let's see how we go guys <laughs> let's see how we go alex is sat here in his office this is our new office loving it right let's give this camera another go I had a look at the footage that we took with it yesterday and it just was not sharp at all. So, hopefully this is a little bit better. So tonight we have my mum over and we're just going to have a little bit of a movie night. We've just been out for a pub a pub dinner which was lovely. Um, and again, it's just been a really nice busy day, productive day, getting lots and lots of things done. We shot two campaigns, so great day. Tonight we're going to watch a film and as you know I'm partnering with Sky this year so this is a paid for advertorial with Sky but we've been kind of indulging in date nights and nights in front of the TV watching new films on Sky Cinema. It's actually been really nice kind of taking that time out to do that and be together, have popcorn, watch a film. Come on! So that's what we're going to do tonight. Plus my mum's going to join us and I think we're going to watch the new Ghostbusters. The new Ghostbusters film with Paul Rudd. And seeing as Ghostbusters is such a kind of classic, legendary kind of film, we thought we would watch it all together. Okay, are you ready to watch it mum? I am. Do you remember where you were or how old you were when you first watched Ghostbusters, the first one? Early 30s when Alex, when you were very small. Because I know Alex used to love the Ghostbusters and he had he had the little gun My brother. and everything. Oh yeah, he did have the gun, didn't he? The, the, the little popper gun that popped yellow sponges out. Oh my gosh! Oh, you've literally just opened a cavern in my brain of that memory. That was brilliant. They were little, like, tube yellow sponges. Mm -hmm. And he'd like, and it was like a, oh, mum, I remember it. And he also had the white Ghostbuster car. Did he? Wow, that gun, I remember that gun. That's so funny. These Orange. tubes of, of sponge, like sponge, little sponge yeah. bullets out. Oh my goodness, wow. Aren't there a couple of Ghostbusters? What's the one where at the end, the big white jelly monster thing walks through New York City and it's like, Your love taking me higher than I never yeah. looked at before. Do you know what I mean? The big Michelin man thing. Yeah, the Michelin man. And is that a different Ghostbusters or is that the first one? I think there were 
As far as I, I can remember two. Yeah, I think there were two as well. There was one original, and then there's a second one, I think. Yeah. And it's all about that baby, yeah. and that weird guy's trying to steal that baby, and that's he manages right, to get that's it. That's the second one. That was quite, that was quite spooky. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's a great film. So actually, I'm quite looking forward to watching this. So it's Paul, have you heard anything about this, Mum? Paul uh, Rudd. No, I haven't heard a lot. Right, so we just need to get to Sky Cinema. I mean, there it is. Ghostbusters Afterlife. Excellent. Play. God, it's got five stars. That's good. So this is going to be extremely high definition here, Mum. 52 original films launched this year on Sky Cinema, plus all the blockbusters. So there is so much to watch on here, actually. So this is quite nice. We're ticking one off tonight. So me and Mum going to have movie night. Who are you going to call? Not Mum, because she's asleep. <laughs> That was so good! That was absolutely brilliant. I know that you only saw about 80% of it, Mum. <laughs> Not even that, doesn't it look big? Mum! Oh, honestly, my mum would fall asleep if there was like a rave going on around her. I'm tired. <laughs> to be fair, she has just got back from Florence today, so I can let you off, but that was absolutely Brilliant. Brilliant, Phil. Don't you think so? I think the young child actors in it were really good. Yeah, weren't they? One of the lad actors in it is the young boy in Stranger Things. I don't know who the little girl was, but she was brilliant, wasn't she? She was. It was really good. Really good storyline. Fantastic acting. Like There was no ridiculous like cheesy acting, which I liked. It was a good storyline. It like linked up well with like previous Ghostbusters. And then it finished with the soundtrack. Oh. I bet bro would love that, you know. I'll have to tell bro to watch it as well. I would I would give that a good like nine and a half out of ten. Maybe nine out of ten. <laughs> Morning guys. My god, what a rush. What a mad rush. I'm on my way into London. In honesty, I just there's just those days where I just don't want to have to put makeup on and rush myself. <laughs> Today was one of those days, so I was I was pottering around the garden and feeding the plants, the feeding the plants, enjoying time in bed with a coffee, and then gave myself half an hour to get ready, film a TikTok, and pack my bag. So it's been a crazy one. And then as I went to leave the house, I literally caught my entire hip bone on a door handle. So that's gonna be wonderfully bruised. I'm just hoping that I've got everything in my bag and I've managed to pack correctly. <laughs> just one of those days. But I've got a 10 o'clock meeting, then a 12.30 meeting with the Clay de Po team and the NARS team, so that'll be amazing. And then I'm going, and then later on I'm going to an event with Sky to watch the brand new series of The Flight Attendant. So that's gonna be a lovely evening. Oh gosh, it's just always such a mad rush when I put myself in this position. It's the same me. After a number of meetings, I am now checked in at the Standard Hotel for my evening event tonight. Yeah, I also nipped into Bulgari as well because the battery on my beautiful Serpenti watch that I wear every single day has finally met the dust, bit the dust. You know what I mean. I nipped into Bulgari, got that all sorted, come straight to the Standard and checked in, got some goodies. This appears to be an away suitcase, which is amazing. I have always wanted one of these. So this is incredible. A little locked padlock. Is this a bit like the last time when I had to work out how to get into the padlock? It might be. So, so if I haven't said already, we're here to watch season two, episode one of The Flight Attendant. If you guys haven't seen this already, by the way, it is such a brilliant show. Me and Alex loved this show. Tomorrow we have a face gym private treatment in the junior suite. Hell yes! I don't know how to get into this. Maybe we have to unpack that later. But very, very cool. This just has such a fantastic view outside of the St Pancras Hotel. It's a really unique hotel this. It almost has a bit of a cabin feel to it. And then through here I've got little bathroom. It's a lot bigger than the rooms I've stayed in in here before. This is great. Oh, this is uh, today's out for the day. Very beige, very neutral. <laughs> right, so I have a few things to do. I need to unpack my own suitcase. Much better. Ready for dinner. I haven't changed that much, actually. <laughs> Just put on a little bit more makeup to freshen up and then change the cinnamon blouse that I got probably 
four years ago, three, four years ago. It's still one of my favorite tops I've ever bought. It's still cute, goes with everything. Paired it with the skirt, super, super easy. So I'm gonna have to change my blouse for dinner, which isn't too bad. Still wearing my Veneto necklace from Edge of Amber gold ring. Okay, I'm gonna go meet Josie now in her room. We're gonna have a little drink before we meet everyone else for dinner and a really good catch up. I know what they say about moving too fast, you know, no big life changes in the first year, but... Good morning, guys. I had a really fantastic sleep, which doesn't usually happen when I'm alone in hotel rooms and it's really, really dark. I usually like a little bit of light coming through just so I can pinpoint where I am in the room. That's happened many a times, where I think that I'm literally on the other side of a room. I have no idea how to get to the other side. <laughs> yes, I had a really, really good sleep last night here. Yeah. We had a lovely evening with the Sky team. We all sat together all around like a little living room and watched the first episode of The Flight Attendant. Honestly, it's really great. Like the first season, was fantastic. I don't know if any of you guys have watched that. Highly recommend it if you've not. Even Alex really enjoyed it. Like Alex is very particular on what shows he watches and will really get like and delve into and keep watching. And The Flight Attendant was one he watched all the way through when we binged it and we both loved it. So to me that says a lot actually that he really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, I got to watch episode one. So we'll be watching the rest of the season together. Um, yeah, really, really recommend it. It's on Sky. We just had a nice meal and then we just had loads of chats at the end and I got to chat with a few people that I've not seen for a very, very long time. I realise I haven't opened this case still and the code for the case was staring me right in the face the whole time. It was literally 265 the 26th of May. So let's give this a go. I've never had an away case before. So this is really quite exciting. Okay, is it? It's like a little charging kit for the battery pack. Cause I think this has a battery pack in it so you can charge your phone on it. And then here. I did not expect all this. Well, I had a sleep mask that I could have used, but didn't because I was too tired when I came to bed. Oh, I love these, they're such beautiful masks. Okay, so I've got a Face Gym High Performance cont Contouring Tool. Very excited about this. Today I'm about to go for a Face Gym session. I've never had one before. Really excited about it. Styling cream. To be honest, my hair is beyond repair right now. I just need to wash it. Brush. Oh, and they've even had it, they've even had it customised. Gosh, they've really thought about everything. That's so lovely. And then, last but not least, a little Anya Heimarch bag. A little bag of goodies and inside. We've got Origins and another face gym. Lift and Brighten Vitamin C Gel Cream. Wow, did not expect all that. That is really, really cool. Thank you so much to the Sky Team. Such a lovely gift, such a nice thought. And the fact that this suitcase, that this away case is now mine. Alex is going to want this. As soon as I get back, he's gonna want this, for sure. I pummeled you with my hands. I'm just, I like to concentrate on drainage at this point. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I think we just got one of these actually in our, Did you? Um, in our rooms. Yeah, oh, nice. so, so I'm excited to sh for you yeah, to show yeah, me great how to do this. Great for in-flight treatment so you don't look like a complete madman wiping <laughs> your face about. This is a great alternative um, mm. if you want to work on tension release, reducing the puffiness. It does regular use help with really defining those contours of your face. Oh, wonderful. And maintaining results we've achieved in a workout. It's really nice with how cooling it is because it's silver, isn't it? Absolutely. It's made from medical grade stainless steel for the very mm. reason. Not only does it not break, tarnish or crack, but it cools down just as well as it heats up. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's so weird. Well, guys, I have absolutely thoroughly enjoyed my first face gym experience. This was an express one. How long is a normal one? 35 minutes. So Express is 35 minutes. Express is 25. Oh, 25. Yeah. Amazing I mean, what you get in 10 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I bet it is. But I mean, this is amazing for 25 minutes. I feel like so much more plumped. Like all of this feels like bigger and fuller. Like you've had something, but yes. it's just your face. We've not taken anything away. Yeah, I think that must have been that machiney thing, eh? Oh yeah, that's like, polishes everything off beautifully. I feel great now. I'm not putting Good. any makeup on. No makeup to. today. No, no. <laughs> Good afternoon guys. It is Saturday. We've been having a lovely little day. We went out earlier, did a little bit of shopping around the shops. 
obviously that's where you shop because Alex wanted to go shopping and then me and mum have literally just been lazing outside in the sunshine having a bit of a nap so now my makeup is kind of smudged everywhere because I've just been sleeping in the sunshine however I wanted to come and clear out a bit of my makeup drawers because it's got a little bit a little bit insane in here I couldn't get any more eyeshadows inside of my drawer what I'm going to do is I'm going to like pull all my eyeshadows out have a look at them test them swatch them check which colours I love and then kind of reduce down from there. So, I've got this new Girl on fragrance as well. Well, it is lovely, you know. Ooh, neroli. Smells quite citrusy, really citrusy. Like lemons, neroli, I think. Ooh, vetiver as well. Oh, it's really like uplifting and like a spring day. Ooh, too much though. <coughs> And also comes as a refill now. So Guerlain are moving towards refills for their beautiful Aqua Allegoria scents. I mean, that is so nice to see, isn't it? These bottles as well. I don't know if I've seen any of these bottles. They're so stunning. They are some of the most beautiful perfume bottles, I think. So this is great that you get refills now. I need to find a place for that. Um, right, let me have a peek. So I have already been clearing some bits out because obviously quite a lot of these things as well I've had for a really long time. There's also things I just don't want to get rid of either. I also think maybe it would be a good idea if I started to put, because I've got currently everything in like brands and maybe it would be better if I put them into like colours. And when I need like a colour, it's there. Would that make more sense? Just to give you an idea, this is this is currently my eyeshadow drawer. And like, for example, I've got all my Tom Fords and then I've got my Charlotte Tilbury's and my Armani's and my Louboutin, Nars. I've got loads of different sticks, Armani's, Armani's. So maybe I just need to put them more into colour coordinated sections. Yeah, this is better. Palettes, smaller palettes. These here are like my everyday shades, like matte, like essential shades, and then everything else in here is somewhat coordinated into like blues, blacks and greens, pinks, and then it's kind of like rose golds into like bronze and golds here. Oh, and then whites over here. I'm gonna forget this by the time I come to look at it again, but I mean, I know the average person does not need this many eyeshadows, it's a bit insane, but just in case I need to do any looks or something, Everything is now here. I'm gonna have to be careful of this now. All of my bronze sticks. Do you know, I, I mentioned kind of at the start of the vlog about chatting to you just about, you know, like social media and how I feel about it and just kind of like the state of social media right now. I'm in such a strange place at the moment with social media. Not only am I trying to find a really good work-life balance in complete honesty because you know, it's really quite difficult to maintain a really healthy work-life balance when you do this job. And it, when you're as obsessed with the job as I am, it's very difficult to retain a kind of normal life that isn't completely centred around continuous work. Because obviously my life is online, I vlog my entire lifestyle, I take pictures of everything I do, every outfit, I put every meal, pretty much any lovely meals I have, I put them on my stories. You know, it's almost like every single piece of my life is documented. So it adds this kind of strange layer to life, really. You know, and every, everything is, is to, be, to be documented. And so it, it, it's really difficult to have a healthy work-life balance because of that. But I've been really trying, kind of trying my best to step away from social media and give myself more time off of it and to not be so obsessed with it. As much as I'm doing that, I also think that everybody else is also doing that because I feel a really big shift is happening currently, especially with Instagram and I'd love to hear your perspective on it. Like, I'd love to know how many of you guys are on TikTok for a start because I realised a couple of years ago it was probably barely any of you would have been on TikTok because it was such a different channel back then like a couple of years ago it was very much for gen z super young school kids kind of age so there weren't as many people you know our age or older who were on tiktok so it wasn't really that kind of channel and then it just kind of spiraled out of control and got bigger and bigger and bigger over covid and that led to more of like the millennial generation getting onto tiktok and through that, I've, I've come, now I've come to really, really enjoy it. What I like about it is the fact that you can have a real, you can like really show your personality on there. That's what I find so nice about it. 
like I feel I can be a bit more personable and chatty and show more personality and it's a less oh well I say it's a less judgmental space it's not a less judgmental space at all if anything it's probably more judgmental but I feel like I don't care as much on there I feel like I can just be totally myself and I don't care really what people think about it so I'm really quite enjoying TikTok. So how many of you are on TikTok? If you're on TikTok, let me know down below and then let me know, are you still enjoying Instagram the same? Do you find that you use and utilize Instagram to the same amount? Because I have a feeling that not as many people are utilizing it the same as they used to. Like I personally find myself going on Instagram less. I find myself scrolling TikTok more. That might just be because I'm really enjoying it. I don't know. But I also think that Instagram and TikTok are two very different social channels in that Instagram was all about kind of scroll and tap, scroll and tap to like. Whereas TikTok isn't really as much about liking as it is just about scrolling and consuming. And I feel like because of that, because of TikTok, it's just scroll, 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 scroll. Sometimes I even forget to like on TikTok because I feel it's like more of a watching platform. I forget to like. Like for example on YouTube, I never like on YouTube because I always forget to. It's not a habit that I've picked up and it's the same on TikTok. Whereas on Instagram, it was all about the like, the like, the like. And in the end, the reach of an Instagram post is based on how many people are liking it. It's like Super Mario. It's like if you get a certain amount of likes and a certain amount of time, the gates open and you get to move on to level two. And in level two, your post reaches this many more people. And then if they all really like it, then the next gate's open and you get to move up to level three and that's when even more people see it. But if in level one you're getting less likes because people have stopped liking your posts due to a change in their habits when they scroll, aka not liking on Instagram because they've learned not to like on TikTok, it means that the reach is going to be less and less and less for posts. The reach is gathered in a very different way, engagement is gained in a very different way and I feel like Instagram just isn't keeping up with the change in habits and the change in how people are utilising these platforms. Instagram really needs to, sh to shake things up a little bit I think. In terms of me and my content, I've really been putting a lot of effort in this year to really make much more beautiful quality content. I've been really challenging myself and I've been really excited to do that. But equally, if that's not what you guys want to see, I know sometimes people are like, oh, Victoria, just get on with it, stop asking us what we want to see. But equally, I create content for you guys who have supported me and who have, you know, watched my channel for a really long time and who really care. And I make content for you. If I'm, you know, missing the mark in terms of what you guys really want to see at the moment, then um, it's just good for me to know. If you are on TikTok and you don't follow me over there, it's, it's Victoria Magrath. And like I said, it's much more kind of like personality and, a, and I kind of show, I do, I get ready every day. I show my outfits every day. I'm doing a lot more content. My mum my mom is like, but if you're doing more content on there, like how do I see it? Like, do I have to download TikTok? And I'm like, I'm like, mom, just don't. I'm just doing my blushes now. There's a lot of colors in here that just aren't right for me. Yeah, but equally I'd love to know like, are you guys still really enjoying Instagram? Uh, do you enjoy Instagram? Do you use it still a lot? Do you, do you see yourself going on it more? Or are you using it far less? It would be just kind of good to know what are your habits? You know, are you using it as much as you used to? Because I feel like Instagram really need to do something new soon to really excite people back to that platform. I feel like I've got a little bit, just a bit dis illusion disappointed of Instagram recently it just doesn't feel like the same platform anymore I feel like Instagram really wanted to move into videos they created reels I created a lot of reels I grew massively from making reels and then now they don't push video quite the same but yet they also don't push or reward imagery anymore and I mean everyone is seeing it or at least the vast majority of people are seeing that people don't seem to like imagery anymore. You know, more people feel a pressure to create video, but yet there's so, there is now so much video, it's so saturated, that it's hard for people's videos to be seen. Whereas on TikTok, what's so exciting about TikTok is that anybody's videos can go viral, anyone's videos can get picked up. It has a much better way of sharing and creating reach for video content than Instagram does. It's very hard to grow on Instagram 
or to be seen outside of your bubble. That's the only thing with Instagram. And I think they really need to change the way that people can see and find users on Instagram. So it's a bit more exciting again for users. That's why I'm so intrigued by TikTok because it's kind of exciting um, and it's a new challenge. So it's new for me, like I've done Instagram now for 10 years. You know, like that's a long time to be on one platform and expect you guys to still be enjoying my content when, you know, I've been here for 10 years, you might be wanting something fresh. So I'm putting something fresh on TikTok, I suppose. That's my point. But if you don't follow me on social media like that, I'm just Victoria on Instagram, Victoria McGrath on TikTok. I'd love for you to let me know like feedback as to what content you're liking the most. And maybe then I can kind of keep that up a bit. But I'd love your thoughts. I'd love your impressions about Instagram and TikTok and the way it's changing right now. I feel like there's massive shift in the types of content being created and where people are starting to put their content. So let me know. Finish this drawer too. Okay, hand gels, extra setting sprays. Some of the setting sprays I'm really loving. And then I've got peachy or orange blushes, pink blushes, and then pale blushes here. 